everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Yves Saint Laurent is the word du jour today. I'm doing an unboxing and a review. Let's bagaff straight away. This is gonna be, okay. Black usually takes all the light away so it gets dark. So we're gonna take this away in a second, but let's first see what we have here in the bag. This is what I'm gonna be unboxing and reviewing today. Opium, the pure perfume by Yves Saint Laurent, as well as the body cream. And these are repurchases because I have, I have had these already and they are empty now. So we're gonna, actually the cream isn't yet, but I got a really good deal. So what else did Yves Saint Laurent give me? They were on sale, but we're gonna get to all of that in a second. So I got a mascara, mascara volume, False lash effect. Great. I, that's all I need is false lashes. The cheapest um, sample you can get. Literally, you gotta peel this off to get the floral shock version of black opium. But it is all glittery. So, at least it looks cute. But, of course, we're not gonna use it. And then these... Okay, let's take away the bag, finally. These little fellas. Tiny... Lipstick hangers, metal hangers that you can, I don't know, attach to something. I guess it's charms to necklaces or whatever. They gave me two of them. Two little uh, Yves Saint Laurent lipsticks. Thank you, YSL, for that. Now, um, opium the cream. You can see I still have a little bit left, but I got 30% off on it. So I'm, I'm afraid they're discontinuing the cream. So... I'm not going to open this one yet. I'm, you know, just stocking up because I love this cream so much. As you can see, it's half empty. It's almost done for, as they say. It's the richest cream they have. I've tested the Chanel creams as well. The number five, the body cream, not the body lotion. Also the Chance body cream, not body lotion. They're too watery. They're too liquidy. They're not as rich and dense as, as this one is. It's amazing. And uh, let's... Uh, now, for Opium, the Pure Perfume, let's unbox it. It's kind of hard with this light here, but I'm going to... Should we do it from the bottom? Ah, me and perfumes. Now let's do it from the top. So excited for this one because I have had, as you can see, the Pure Perfume in 15ml Splash, and it's empty. Empty. I... Sucked it dry, but also what I do now Oh, it smells so good even opening it up even though it's empty The smell is amazing. Let's open this quick note. This video will be ad free on patreon So join my community on patreon super deco ball spell together if you wish to watch this video ad free And it also premieres on patreon prior to its premiere on YouTube The YouTube version does have ads running through the video So what I've noticed, um, unfortunately, now I know a lot of you have been asking me, oh, Deco, where did you get opium? I mean, you, you can still get it in Europe. But unfortunately, even in Europe, I've noticed it's, it's the end. I think that they only produced it for a short period of time um, in 2017, to be exact. Oh, there it is. Ugh. I'm always in awe every single time. Are you kidding me? I love this perfume so much. So what I've I've checked the um at the bottom here, you can see the um batch code. Well that's hard to see anyway. So it's 62P2 okay. 62P20DL. Now Every box of uh, opium parfum that I found has that batch code. The batch code then goes back to February of 2017. So it's three years old, basically. And I, I can't find uh, anywhere a batch that's younger than that. So I think that they've interrupted production after February 2017. I hope that they haven't, but it seems as though they have. 
which is terrible news. So I'm, you know, stocking up whenever I manage to find something uh, for a good deal, I buy it because I love opium so much. I am literally, I know it's a, it's kind of like a pun because it has, the perfume has the name of a drug, but I am addicted to it. Um, so this is the, the box of the other one that I had that's now empty. There's a little sponge in there to protect the stopper. So it kind of lays on top of it like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I even keep these boxes there. They're really gorgeous. Now in the 70s and 80s and even all the way through the 90s, they made these in plastic. But I do like the paper version much more. I don't know. Somehow I've grown accustomed to this one and I find it much more elegant with the folded paper and cardboard than the plastic version used to be. Uh, in this video, we're also going to touch base on the eau de toilette. The classic original, you could check out the review of this one in the card section up above, but also the link is in the description box down below. This is the packaging, how it used to look like. Much more ornamental than uh, the new, more minimal version that came out in the 2010s, the late 2010s. And we will mention also the Eau de Parfum, the new uh, formulation of the Eau de Parfum of Opium, because some people do state that the formulation, the 2017 version of the Pure Perfume, is just a more concentrated version of the Eau de Parfum. Is that true or not? We're going to find that out in this review. Um, I personally, well, we'll get to it. We don't know yet, right? I mean, I know already, but we're going to find out. Now, a thing that I did with this one after I started using it, uh, pretty soon after that, I... Uh, this splash bottle, I mean, to travel with it, it's it's very delicate. So I do um, decant uh, the, the perfume, oh, there's a little pebble there, uh, into glass bottles. And this one is now empty. So I will actually decant this one in here as well. And I will be probably getting a third one just to have always one to have with the liquid in it and, you know, to use it as a sort of a splash bottle or just to have the beautiful full version of it with the yellow liquid in there and uh, I always have the little sprayer with me when I travel. So this is a 20 ml glass bottle that I got at, at a pharmacy and I also have a bigger, how big is this one, 50 ml bottle that I got for the Eau de Toilette, the vintage Eau de Toilette. So I have decanted that in here as well and uh, just be careful if you do decant your, your opiums uh, that, uh, well, first of all, I use a funnel, like a glass funnel. I, you know, you can unscrew this, put the funnel in there, and then just like verse. It's it's a bit tricky because, um, as you can see, the glass is surrounded by a ring of metal, and then you get perfume kind of pouring in, in between the glass and the metal. So you got to really know how to how to work your magic with this one. But it's it's all doable. You just got to have a lot of patience and be very precise. But what I wanted to say is be careful. Some people uh, also purchase decantable bottles out of plastic. Opium does not like plastic. The actual pure perfume is quite resinousy and oily. So what happens is um, it kind of, I don't want to say it starts melting the plastic, but the plastic inside gets gooey if it's in, in contact with the pure perfume for a long, for a longer period of time. So you got to be careful there. Uh, I would always recommend... Um, I would always recommend using glass bottles uh, to decant. So this is how it looks inside. This is actually a fabric material. And there it is, our new opium. Um, already in the past, this has been the case. As you can see, slight difference in bottle color. The Eau de Toilette was a little bit lighter than the Pure Perfume. That is, That should not be a surprise. It's still the case now. Uh, okay, so shall we open this one just a little bit just to test it out? By the way, I'm wearing, um, it's a soft, not 20 years old, but it's a soft vintage uh, Yves Saint Laurent bracelet. This was made while uh, Eve was still alive. Okay. And, you know, mind you, I am pushing pure perfumes because it is an art that is dying out. Let's just put it here oh that's a lot and look the cool thing is 
it kind of just hangs there. It's so dangerous, you have the feeling it's going to like flip over and you're going to lose all the liquid, but it's it's not going to happen. We're going to be very careful. Okay. So I will be, as I said before, decanting this one in the little sprayer bottle. Um, uh, oh my gosh, the, the smell is amazing. Where do we put this now? So, so I'm sure it doesn't fall uh, down. Okay. Mm. Now, the people that hunt down vintage opium, the pure parfum, uh, usually have, well, usually say, oh, I prefer the original uh, to the new. I know it's very rare to find the pure perfume nowadays, even in the newer concentration or the new formulation, but people do tend to say that they prefer the original. Now, I do have, uh, well, I don't have it anymore because I, I finished it, but I have tested several times in my life the vintage, vintage pure perfume of opium. Uh, they all, they don't, opium is a bit tricky. It doesn't age as well. It's very, it very easily... Mm, the top notes kind of go a bit rancid. Now, you could be lucky and find really well-preserved bottles, but it's kind of tricky. And what is... So, to the people that say that the new formulation of the Pure Perfume is not the same as the old formulation, I tell you, be wary of the fact that this is a fresh batch. Now, even though this one is three years old, that's still very fresh if compared to a, a seven, a late 70s or early to mid 80s or early 90s batch. And uh, in general, fragrances, if you don't open them, you know, they say that on, on the shelf life is up to five years. After you open them, then there's this like date. This one says 24 months. So now that we've opened this one, it will be kind of fresh for 24 months after opening it. And... These don't last 24 months or <laughs> two years. No, I'm done with them in half a year tops uh, because I really use it a lot. And especially because I I burst them into the uh, the sprayer bottles. So I say there's a freshness and a sparkliness to the Pure Perfume when it's fresh. So you will think that it smells quite different from the vintage Pure Perfume that you find sometimes on secondhand websites. But... Uh, you know, if this one were to age 15 years without it being used or opened, it would have a very similar smell to the vintage ones today. So that's something to keep in mind. However, of course, with all the reformulations that have been going on, this one is also uh, reformulated as opposed to the 70s, 80s, 90s version of it. However, it's still incredibly good and powerful and potent and uh, on my clothes it goes on for days and days you can't even wash it out on the skin at least 13 hours to 14 hours longevity and this is when I spray it if I dab it on my skin then it's a different situation because depending on how much I decide how little or, or, or a lot I decide to use so let's smell it it's really 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 good top notes are coriander plum citruses mandarin orange Pepper, jasmine, cloves, West Indian, bay and bergamot. Mid notes are carnation, sandalwood, patchouli, cinnamon, orris root, peach, lily of the valley, rose. And then we got in the base notes, labdanum, tolu balsam, sandalwood, apoponax, musk, coconut, vanilla, benzoin, vetiver, incense, cedar, myrrh, castorium oil, and amber. Now, the pure perfume is everything. It's all of these things. Now you can imagine how, how intense and, and, and powerful that is. And still in the formulation from 2017, hmm, we sense out the complexity of it. But I am talking about pure perfumes a lot lately because this is a dying art. As I said before, many brands in my other videos, many brands are discontinuing their pure perfumes. They are because they're not being sold as much, they're not just pushing them anymore. They're, I think many brands consider it to be uh, too much, too expensive of a product and not enough are sold. And But then it's about education. You know, uh, when I was younger, always reading brands describing pure perfumes as a, a different type of a gesture of perfuming yourself. It's an intimate gesture. It's it's more of a a, a personal, intimate type of application of sensuality to yourself and for yourself. And I never really understood that. I thought, well, okay, what a very, 
I don't know, forced way to justify the fact that they cost more because you're spending more time with yourself when you're wearing them. But, you know, the more you deal with pure perfumes and the more you wear them and the more you get used to the fact that, or the more you realize that it really is a personal intimate gesture. And it's about education. And, and I really don't want that type of art to die. Not just the art of making them, but also the art of using them and how to apply them and what do they actually mean for us. And I can tell you that pure perfumes in general, and that also applies for opium in, in its pure perfume form, they are uh, more, uh, how would you call it, they're more subtle. They definitely stay closer to the skin. They don't vibrate as much as the Eau de Parfum would or the Eau de Toilette would. They don't project as much. They are more intimate, but it's it's an intimacy that you keep on smelling on yourself because with the heat of the body, what happens is you get wafts of, of opium uh, from your chest area, from behind the ears or wherever you're putting it on all the pulse areas, and, and you keep getting hints of it, nuances of it. It keeps whispering to you all the time. And that that's the magic of a pure perfume that you don't get with Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum spray versions uh, because they're louder. They, they scream more. But the pure perfumes whisper and it's because they whisper that you manage to decipher um, the magic that, that's inside of them because they're not as loud. So you manage to feel, hear, sense out and smell the nuances that are usually blandified and kind of somehow mushed up in the other concentrations. The pure perfumes are the ones that whisper the truth to you always. And it's it's a wonderful thing to, to be able to fall in love with a pure perfume because once you do, if you are lucky enough to manage and fall in love with a pure perfume, uh, you will be in love with that pure perfume for the rest of your life. You'll never get bored of it. You might have periods in which you use it less because it's too hot outside or too cold, you know, depending on what type of fragrance and what type of ingredients are in it. But you will always come back to, to your true loves, and your true loves are the pure perfumes, if you manage to fall in love with them. Um, it does sparkle in the opening notes, because it's also a fresh batch. So you do get uh, the, the citruses, a little bit of the mandarin orange, but it's very peppery. So what happens is, um, I would also say, you know, you can almost feel as if it had a lot of aldehydes in there, but, you know, sometimes... In some cases, aldehydes are listed. In other cases, they're not. But, um, you know, Yves Saint Laurent does not shy away from aldehydes. And aldehydes have been in the Yves Saint Laurent realm um, for a longer period of time. And aldehydes, you know, were introduced into perfumery already in the 20s, maybe even before, but became really big in the 20s. And uh, even though officially not listed here, Rive Gauche, for example, is a big aldehyde fragrance. But what is very important here, that sparkly opening again, because this is a very fresh batch, uh, that very sparkly opening is also supported by patchouli. Now, even though the patchouli is in the mid-notes, the patchouli here delivers uh, a specific type of oily um, sparkle, an earthy, oily sparkle. It's amazing, and it definitely is worth smelling out in the pure perfume because it's much more obvious and much more rounded in the pure perfume than it would be in the eau de parfum form for example so patchouli is kind of key here as well as is opoponax more than sandalwood and more than musk the musk in the pure perfume i mean i would i would say you know i'm not uh, a chemist so i can't tell you 100 percent, but i would tip I, I would I would bet that the musk is synthetic. And I think also, legally speaking, I think it has to be synthetic. Uh, the Apoponax, I mean, it is a resin in itself, so how, how can it be synthetic or not? Everything can be synthetic nowadays, but the Apoponax is the sweet type of incense murray type of smell that, together with the patchouli, Tricking you, and this is what this is the interesting part, with the clove and carnation and cinnamon, that's the magic of opium. Clove and carnation are amazing here. Clove, 
you know, carnation is also, and clove is what Coco, Coco uh, the eau de parfum and the pure perfume, used to have overdoses of back in the 80s when it was first released. The version today is much more toned down in the eau de parfum form. The pure perfume is still out there, it's still okay, but um, here, still in the 2017 version, carnation, clove, cinnamon are there. And they are so delicious. And that's what keeps this fragrance, smelling it again, that's what keeps this fragrance going warm and strong and deep and rich and um, supple all the way through to the dry down. There is no, there's no in between really. It's, it's, <laughs> It's literally that warm till the bitter end. It does change. The pure perfume changes on your skin while you're wearing it. Not so much so in the smell, but rather in the nuances of the heat and warmth that it projects. So if throughout the day, throughout those 12 to 14 hours that you're wearing it, that you're smelling it on yourself like I do on me, you know, if I'm more stressed or less stressed, if I'm more calm, less calm, if I'm more cooled down, more calm, more, more heated up, more more cooled, uh, if I'm hungry, if I'm not hungry, I will smell the heat of opium in a different way. It will fluctuate, it will alternate its intensity of heat, but nevertheless the heat will stay till the bitter, bitter end. And that's magic. Because a lot of perfumes today, you know, in their other concentrations, EDTs, EDPs, a lot of them, a lot of modern creations, just have a really bland and quite frankly cheap smelling dry down. That's not the case here. The deeper it goes and the more you're going to be burying your nose into your skin because you're going to want more of that heat. You're going to get addicted to it. That's literally why the name is opium. In the pure perfume form you will get addicted to it because that warmth is something you're going to seek out and you're going to want to seek out each and every nuance of that warmth on your skin. So you're going to keep on sniffing yourself. I mean, that's just how good it is and that's how good it's going to make you feel. And that's why I am begging Yves Saint Laurent to reintroduce the pure perfume on all the markets worldwide, because this is such a pity to lose this jewel, to lose this diamond. I mean, that they've, produced it only in 2017 and then stopped producing it again, it, it's such a shame. A quick uh, comparison or just a sort of answer to the people that say that the Pure Perfume current formulation is just a more intense version of the Eau de Parfum. I would say no. It's more than that. It's more oily. It's more resinousy. And the biggest difference between the two is uh, that the Pure Perfume of Opium it uh, dries down to a warm bed of a floral type of a poponux where the carnation and the clove are still really active. While the eau de parfum doesn't go into that poponuxy resinousy territory, the dry down, while still potent and while it still lasts really, really long time, it kind of has a drier feel to it, which is also great, but to my nose it smells a, a nuance. I mean, I love the Eau de Parfum, so I don't want to say it's cheaper than the Pure Perfume. I mean, it is cheaper because it costs less. The ratio milliliter, uh, you know, the dollar per milliliter or euro per milliliter is, is just way different, obviously, but that's the, how it is with Pure Perfumes in general. Um, but it, it does have less of an intimate warmth, the Eau de Parfum, definitely, uh, fr from the Pure Perfume. So it's not just about a higher concentration. So it's not just that the Pure Perfume is a higher concentration of the Eau de Parfum. It is different. It, it's, it is richer. It, it is more deep and in many ways darker, but also lighter. Because when you are wearing opium... Uh, the pure perfume, you are going on a journey and it does take you over endless landscapes of dunes. And I know this is considered the epitome of an, of an oriental fragrance, but to me, there's also the desert in there. There's 
the sun and the sun is, is burning your skin but at the same time it's as if you had a protection shield which is opium that kind of cools you while it's so hot outside it still cools your soul and it comforts you and it makes you feel like everything is going to be okay so it is like an addiction i mean your body is like suffering it's burning under the sun but at the same time internally you are high and that extreme amount of pleasure um you don't you don't get so high with your parfum you only achieve that with the pure parfum so everybody what i'm telling you now is uh if you want to preserve pure perfume artistry and also the pure perfume of opium you got a right to Yves Saint Laurent cosmetics or Yves Saint Laurent beauty and you got to demand that they bring it back and the only way that these huge corporations listen and react is by the sound of the coin if they see potential for making money off of this they'll bring it back that's at the end of the day that's all it is I just think they tried it in 2017 sales probably didn't go well but also I guess their distribution didn't wasn't so huge they probably didn't market it well enough and people didn't even know that the pure perfume was back because every time i showcase the pure perfume on my social media most of my followers tell me deco but what we thought it was discontinued so a lot of people don't even know that this is on still on the market in some countries uh so they should give it another try another go you know i'm really hopeful and i'm not talking about the eau de parfum obviously i'm talking about the pure perfume only the eau de parfum is still available as is the eau de toilette and then another thing that's, again, that I've noticed being discontinued and on the French Yves Saint Laurent website is not available anymore, is the rich cream, the body cream. So that's another one of those. That's why I purchased it now, because just to be safe, to have one more. Uh, it's amazing to layer the cream with the perfume. First put on the cream, 20 minutes to 30 minutes later, add a bit of the perfume on top. It's just... Uh, you, mm. Mm -mm. heaven on earth thank you guys so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed my review of opium the pure perfume and let's hope that uh, pure perfumes have a comeback pretty soon and that people start reintroducing them into their lives and learning how to become more intimate more subtle with oneself we don't always have to scream we don't always have to be vulgar i know social media and television nowadays are so vulgar but it doesn't mean that we always have to fall victim to it we could fight against it for a better world, a more elegant world, maybe. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, but wish to consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and I'm also on Patreon. By the way, this video is available on Patreon. It will be released on Patreon before it's released on YouTube, and on Patreon it will remain ad-free, while as you, if you've come so far, you would have noticed already that the ads are running in this video on YouTube, but not on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, never forget, Never give up on love. Love you. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.